Hey there, speculators. It is Rod Caselli, lead futures trader, derivatives trader at t3live.com slash futures. And welcome to this video, which is going to be called Trader View. That is Trader V-U-E. Trader View tips where I'm going to talk about uh, ways to get the most out of your trade journal. Before I get started, I wanted to remind everyone that this video and all things that I produce is for educational purposes only. You can pause this video at any time to read more about these disclosures and disclaimers. All right, so we're going to be talking about uh, tagging, adding tagging, not spray painting a wall. Um, personally, never done that before. I'm no Bancy, Banky, what's his name? Banshee? Anyhow. We're not talking about that tagging. We're talking about using metadata or uh, tags and also not hashtags, just little bits of information that we're going to associate with our trades. Before I get into that too much, did want to give you some context. If you are watching this video, you're not a member of the Futures on Fire room or you're not familiar with trade journaling, TraderView is an online trade journal. I personally use it, have been using it for nine years. There are other uh, trade journals that are available and out there. To do what I'm doing in here, you would have to have a gold membership to the TraderView uh, online system. Uh, now, the other important thing to point out is that this uh, video, which is about tagging, is really one of the big differenti differentiators between why you may consider using tools like this as opposed to just getting stats and statistics, stats and statistics, out of your uh, trading platform like NinjaTrader or TWIWS or TOS or TC2000 or whatever you trade with, doesn't matter, whatever your platform is, is going to spit out some statistics about your trading. But unless you can actually associate that with metadata or tags, I don't think it really has nearly the effectiveness that um, that uh, I've used it for and that we tra teach and train on in the uh, t3live.com slash futures room. All right, so that's a little bit about what the trade journal is. I want to cover a couple things uh, about adding tags. The first is uh, the easiest way to add some tags is at the import level. All right, so for instance, when you go to import, uh, from all these various brokers that are supported here, right? When you go to import your trades, you can actually add tags right there. So as an example, if I was importing from Tastyworks, I only trade options at Tastyworks. So um, I could actually put in options as a tag and add it to this import. That way, every single trade that I import from Tastyworks is always going to be tagged with options. If I happened to trade both stocks and options and maybe futures at, at uh, Tastyworks and I was importing all of those different instrument types, I wouldn't uh, do a universal tag of options because they wouldn't all be actually options trades. Now also, uh, we're trading mostly micro futures at Tradeavate and Ninja Brokerage. It's very easy to say futures for all of our futures import uh, or something like micros for uh, if they happen to be micros, all right? So that's an example of a way that you can easily import, uh, uh, put the same tag on um, uh, an import of uh, all the trades from a particular broker. The next thing is an account tag. Now, account tag is also very useful. And a question I get asked all the time is, you know, can I import demo or paper trading or sim? Of course, in fact, if you're in that stage of your career, it's a great habit to get into to actually import and look at your your trading. Um, look at your, your simulated trading, your paper trading, if you will. In fact, it's probably going to be a, a good process to keep you more honest about the decisions that you're making in that risk-free environment. So you could put in like SIM 101 or something like that. I don't have that particular tag because I don't import simulated trades, but um, you know I have a variety of different accounts that I uh, that I trade here and I import there, so you can have an account tag as well. All right, so one of the easiest ways to associate tags with uh, your trades is to actually do that at the time you import it. All right, now um, that's only going to be at a very, very high level, right? So it's it's unlikely that you will be able to put universal strategy tags or signal setups or market conditions or anything. Um, and associate those with all the trades that you import on any given day. That might be the case. If you trade very, very infrequently, or if you're laser focused and only trade like one signal and one setup in one market, then potentially you can actually import and associate these tags with every trade that you do from that particular, um, that particular broker. But more likely what will happen is you will import your trades and then you will have something like this, a series of, of um, of all the trade detail here. Now, as you can see, all these trades essentially just have the same tag, just the tag of the instrument and the account tag. I have not gone in and actually added to any of the trades here a uh, an additional tag. 
Um, I'll show you how that's done in just a moment. But before I do that, let me just jump over to some examples of, of tags that you might want to consider using, or ex not these particular tags, but these categories of tags, if you will. All right, so the first would be something like a strategy tag. All right, so for instance, in Futures on Fire, we trade two primary strategies, and one of them is called Stay in Your Lane, so your tag could be S-I-Y-L. That's the strategy tag. We also trade something called the range trader. So that might be just a tag of RT. So if I knew that a series of trades were all uh, part of the stay in your lane strategy, I would tag all those trades with stay in your lane. Or if they're a range trader, I would uh, tag them with range trader. Now, again, the acronyms you use, the choices you make are completely, uh, of course, up to you. You want to choose tags that are meaningful and useful for you to uh, um, to navigate through what will eventually be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of trades. You know, if if you're on the path that I hope many of you watching this video are on, which is that you are passionate about the markets, you want to make this a big part of your income, you're going to have a lot of data eventually to look after. So the more careful you are in choosing your tags, making them meaningful, applying them when you first get started, the better off you'll be going forward. Okay, you could also have like a setup or signal tag, right? So a setup could be something like exa an example uh, that we use in the futures room is like it's called a tick E, a tick entry. That's a particular setup. We also have um, market conditions that you could think of. So market condition could be something just as easy as uh, TD. What does that mean? That might mean it was a trend day. Again, the acronyms that you use and the choices that you make are of course up to you. Just make them meaningful and try to remember the acronyms that you're using. Uh, you might assign a strength, like we talk often about strength of signal, SOS2. That's a strength of signal uh, tag that you could use. I have seen um, another firm that uses this trade journal talk about um, grading particular strengths of, of their setups or their plays as they call them. And those might be, you know, your A plus plays or that was a B minus trade or whatever, or that was a total F, right? Whatever the case may be. Um, and then finally, you could have like a visual price pattern. So a visual price pattern might be like a stop and go. Again, this is specific to futures on fire, specific to a particular bar type, specific to a particular strategy. Um, but the stop and go is a, stra is, a, is a visual price pattern that would occur uh, only in this particular strategy, which is, this, which is the stay in your lane strategy. All right, so hopefully you're getting some ideas there. It's starting to, uh, to, to make sense. And your tags can, can vary beyond this as well. I have in the past also added tags for particular economic news or if it was FOMC day or if it was a non-farm payroll day or if there was um, certain market conditions that were beyond just the simple typical market conditions that were noteworthy of assigning a tag to so that I could go back, remember those market conditions, remember what was happening. Um, I'll give you a quick example. The time I'm making this video over the last two or three prints of the ISM services um, number, it's been way more significant than you would typically see ISM being. So there were some very poor prints that caused a lot of volatility in the market. So I actually created a tag called Econ ISM. I had never really used that before because I wanted to be able to capture the volatility that was occurring in that market at that time. And it should jog my memory even five months from now when I completely forget that there was a month, one month period in which the ISM was more significant uh, than it has uh, otherwise normally been. All right, so that's some examples of how you, oh, and also the other thing is you don't need to add a hashtag in front of this. I mean, it's not an actual hashtag. You can just search based on the acronym or word that you choose. That's another thing. Your it doesn't have to be an acronym. It can be a full word. It can be trend day. You, your tags can be as long as you want. They could be sentences for, for all I care. Just make sure that they're meaningful to you. All right, so if we come back to the trade journal and I just selected any particular trade here, what I would do to actually come in and in add tags to it as I would say edit and I would add my tag here if I want if I knew this was stay in your lane for instance and I wanted to come and add that tag right there it's not meaningful for this this is just for examples I don't know if this was a stay in your lane trade so I'm just going to remove it right there all right so that's how you would go and add the tags now you might be thinking you just told me Rod that you're going to have hundreds of thousands <laughs> millions whatever a lot of trades over the course of your career this is going to be crazy to go in and tag them all 
I agree, you do not need to go in and tag them all. What I generally recommend is you use the, the import tag to start. Oh, I'm getting a phone call, of course, right when I'm recording this. You, you uh, use the import tag to get, get metadata associated with the vast majority of your trades. And then just go in and tag some of the key trades, the ones that stand out. They should absolutely stand out to you. That might be once a day, that might, one trade a day, it might be one trade a week, it might be one trade a month. But that trade that you're gonna spend time with, make sure it's tagged properly, make sure that you have all of the metadata associated with it so you can go back and revisit it. Profitable trade, non-profitable trade, strength of signal five or strength of signal one, or no strength of signal associated with it at all. Whatever the case may be, you wanna make sure that you have a series of trades that you spend more time with and you go back and do this. So the entire process for me of importing trades from three different brokers, and I actively trade in all these different brokers, and going in and tagging a couple key trades a week, uh, I would say takes me five minutes a day, and then the trade I wanna spend a little bit more time with, 10 to 15 minutes as I write it up, and do a number of other um, uh, parts of my process that I'll talk about in other videos, like attaching a screenshot and other things of that nature. So today we're just talking about tags. Hopefully this has been helpful. Make them meaningful for yourself. Yes, you can import and sign an account tag for demo and paper trading. I encourage you to do that. And the most important thing is that you focus on just the key trades. You want to make sure you have all the right data in there. If you do that, you're going to be well on your way to, uh, to really making tools like this, specifically TraderView, a lot more useful to you. Um, if I come back just to the, uh, the dashboard here, uh, where is it? Where Under my journal view, you'll actually see here are the most common it's like a tag cloud, if you will. Uh, the larger the word, the more common that tag is that it occurs in, uh, uh, in the trade journal. In this case, futures, micros, and this account number happen to be the most frequently used tags that I'm using at this point. All right, I will leave it there for now. Hopefully this was helpful. If you are not yet a member or been on trial, you can go to t3live.com slash futures and find out more about how we trade futures for daily income and about how we, we do that which many traders do not do, which is review game tape, qualitative and quantitative reviews of our trades. And we do that all in this particular uh, environment here, traderview.com. Hope to see you on the virtual trade flow though of Futures on Fire. My name is Rod Casilli. I'd like to remind you to always trade like you mean it. Thanks.